Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar. Today, uh, we'll be looking at managing resources within the administration console. Thank you for taking the time to join me today. I know it's an early start for some people. And you have, so today, we're looking at, as I say, at the administration console in terms of managing resources, users, and so on. Um, my own name is Niall Fahey, for anybody who hasn't joined us before. Um, I'm the Education Coordinator for MOSI. I do all the internal and external training for MOSI um, to both our internal support agents and also e external partners. So today, as they, uh, first of all, we're going to look at managing users, uh, devices, resources, and user groups. In terms of users, um, we're just going to look at the options that you have within the administration console. Okay, so we're going to look at the options you have in the admin console for users. I mean, this can bear in mind from what you'll see in my um, admin console. You may have slightly different uh, permissions when you log into the account if you're not the root administrator. Um, depending on what the root administrator has given you permission-wise. If you are the root administrator, you still might see small differences between the abilities in my account that I'll be showing and what you may have within your own account. And that's just down to the fact that this is a training account for me, so I have all the permissions um, applied uh, to my account. We'll be looking at uh, managing devices, so the individual computers the user backs up. And we'll also be looking um, at resources and user groups for those of you who have actual user groups and who are using user groups. Okay, just some definitions there before we move on. So um, just administrator, okay, so that's in terms of the admin, admin console. When we speak about the administrator, the person I'm um, referring to here would be the, mo the person who signs up to the MultiPro account. Okay, um, this is the person who's, managed, uh, who's designated to manage the account by the account owner. Generally, this is the root admin. Okay, so the person who, um, most often than not, it's probably most likely the person who is either the head of the IT team within the, the organization or um, the person who pays the bills. Sometimes we, we get customers, back when I was doing tech support, you would get some customers who their manager might be the, the, the root administrator, but they themselves might control everything in terms of Mosey relation in the company, and they might be the sub-administrator. Okay. The users then are the um, individuals who are assigned to manage a machine that's been backed up by Mosey. So these are the, all the people within your organization that are actually just backing up their own devices. Okay, so that's what we, when I'm referring to users, that's, that's, that's who I'm referring to there. And then resources, okay, so this is the, the user types, uh, the storage quota, and the devices that uh, are being used by Mosey Pro. Okay, so these are the resources when we talk about resources. Um, inside the admin console. There are two user types within uh, Mosey Pro. Okay, so that's uh, desktop and server. Now, some organizations may not need to use servers, uh, server users, um, and other organizations, um, they will use server, server users. Okay, so the desktop um, user is designed for desktop and laptop computers for backing up um, office documents, pictures, media files, you know, the, the kind of things that you would find on your own uh, laptop or desktop in your work environment, okay? Um, a desktop user can install um, only on a desktop operating system, okay? And you don't have the ability when you're back using a desktop user doesn't have the ability to back up um, Okay, I think I might be experiencing some audio issues, so just bear with me a second. Okay, apologies for that. Okay, so as I was saying, um, a desktop user will back up um, only a desktop operating system, and they can't back up network um, devices. So um, uh, network shares or anything like that, you can't back that up on a, on a desktop user. A server user um, is obviously is designed for working on, on server operating systems, okay, um, but it can run on a desktop computer as well. 
Um, so that's the slight difference between a server user and a desktop user. A desktop user can only be used on desktop operating systems. A server user um, can be installed on a desktop operating system if you if you wish, um, but it is it, it is predominantly designed for use with server operating systems. Um, it does allow the backup of network shares um, and network applications with the server user. Okay. So. If you do have a scenario where you're wishing to back up a, na a network device, um, so if you have a network share within the office environment, then it, it would be recommended to use um, a server, uh, set up as a server user, because as I say, server users can back up network devices. So users and devices. Okay, so um, the devices um, are the computers that our users are backing up. Okay, so a user can have multiple devices. Um, up to a maximum of 20 devices underneath an individual user. You can stipulate how many uh, devices you assign to the user when you're actually creating the user, or later on if you want to come back into the administration console and actually edit how many devices that a user has. Okay, um, I'll show you that when we're going through the walkthrough in a minute. Okay, and a user can only be a desktop user or a server user. So if you um, if you're looking to, to back up network devices and stuff like that, you have to set yourself up as a server user. Okay, you can't you can't uh, use both desktop and server under the under the one user account. Again, this may be moving through quite 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 fast in terms in terms of this the slideshow, but I want to give more time to the actual walkthrough and actually see so you can see this in, in action and, and where you can do these various options. Okay. Um, and I will be taking any questions that you may have towards the end of the session. Okay, so resources wise, um, we're talking about here we're talking about storage quota. Okay, so the storage quota is shared throughout the organization. It resides at the organization level. So everybody has the ability to pull from that shared storage. If you um, want to um, ensure that certain people or maybe um, not any users within the organization are not pulling too much um, storage for themselves and taking it from everybody else, you can limit a user or you can limit a device. Okay, so again, that can be done in setup or you can do it later on after you set up the user. Okay, again, I'll be showing you both in the walkthrough. From the resources, you can update your plan. Okay, you can change it either by upgrading your plan or downgrading your plan if you need to. You can do that within the resources section of the administration console. You can also check your billing. Okay, so when your next bill date is and the breakdown of what you're being billed for. You can also view your invoices from here in the resources section. If you haven't signed up um, to uh, receive um, invoices direct to your email, you can, all your, your invoices are stored within the administration console. Okay, so you can, as I say, you can view all those invoices from your um, admin uh, console, um, even if you haven't signed up for the, even if you haven't signed up for um, the emails. And I show you how you can actually opt into those emails as well um, when we're going through the walkthrough. In terms of user groups. In terms of user groups, um, you will see that um, certain um, users may or may not have the uh, ability to use user groups. Okay, so user groups allow you to group um, certain users into 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 groups, or also uh, divide your organization up into individual business units. Okay, so if you do have, say, for example, in your organization, you split it up into um, your marketing division, sales. Um, you may have, you know, you may have, I suppose, uh, finance support if you're in the technical sphere, and and things like that. Okay, so you can do that um, from with the the use of user groups. You can also um, assign your 
your user group's um, storage types. Okay, so you can either have a shared storage group, you can have a limited user group, or you can have an assigned user group. So what do they mean? Shared obviously means that you pull all your storage from the the shared pool of storage that you have there. So when you have a large amount of storage at the organization level, it'll pull from there. Okay. So limited user groups, on the other hand, then um, is where you would actually limit the user group, similar to how you can limit a user or a device. You can you can limit the um, amount of stores that you send to a particular user group, but that still pulls from the shared amount of stores that you have in your account. An assigned user group, on the other hand, pulls, takes the storage out of the shared uh, group and keeps it inside that user group only. And again, I'll show you these um, when we look through the walkthrough in a second. And the last thing you can do with a user group is actually create a server-side configuration for the entire group. So let's go through the um, admin console. Okay, so here is, uh, is my admin console for my uh, account. Apologies to everybody there for the um, audio. Um, for some reason, it keeps dropping my connection. Um, I do have full internet connection, so I'm unsure why it keeps dropping. Um, but I will pause um, if it does drop. If the connection does drop, I will pause um, as I'm as I'm doing that um, in whatever I'm doing and um, continue on once the connection has re-established. Again, I do apologize for this, not ideal, um, but I will edit the recording and, and, and send that out to you um, once we're finished. So in terms of the administration console, we're going to look at here, um, as I mentioned a while ago, in terms of yeah, users. So when we open up our list users, um, we're looking at, um, I sh we look here at what we can see when we open up a user account. Okay, so in my sense here, I'm gonna open up my own account. Okay, and if I want to make any uh, uh, changes to my group, if I have if I have user groups, I can change my user group directly from here. Okay, I can search for the user group and I can move my user in, into the user group that I wish there. As I was mentioning a while ago, with user limits and device limits, okay, I can actually set a storage limit for the user here. That just means that the user won't be able to pull more than the limit that I put in. So currently, I'm pulling storage from the sh uh, shared uh, pool. So the organization's um, amount of storage, I'm pulling currently from that with this user. If I, if I as you can see here, I have 10.7 gigabytes used. And the, the shared amount of storage within this organization training partner is 51.1 gigabytes. That's what's available to everybody at the moment. I could limit my user Okay, I could put in a limit here of just 11 gigabytes. Okay, what that will do is limit all the devices that I have underneath this user. So that's going to include the um, device, my, my machine here, but also my sink. So as you can see there, I have nothing available because I'm actually overusing 
here because at the moment I actually have nearly 15 gigabytes or 14 gigabytes of of data being used between my desktop machine and also my sync container. So what I'm going to see there is I'm going to start seeing error messages in my client when I'm running backups telling me that I'm I'm over quota. So I'll just edit that there and we'll change it to 20 gigabytes instead. If I save that now, you'll see that the available amount of storage will go, will go up. Okay, so I have 6.5 gigabytes now available. And that's sharing that 20 gigabytes amongst my, my two devices. However, that's still pulling from the shared amount of storage. If, um, for example, the storage, uh, that's, uh, that additional 6.5 gigabytes that's available to me now gets used up by another user, on the account, it does mean that I'm going to start getting account. I'm going to get account error messages here telling me I'm over quota because I'm pulling from the shared pool of storage. I can limit an individual machine as well if I want to. Okay, so I can limit this machine to eight gigabytes if I wish, and you can do that from there. So you can you can limit the individual device or you can you can limit the actual user. In particular scenarios where if it's a heavy user, so if somebody is using or overusing uh, the storage on their account, and it may be a scenario where maybe they're they they are backing up absolutely everything on their computer, and you don't need them to back up everything, only maybe their specific work documents, um, then you can limit it to make sure that they actually go about selecting carefully what files they want to back up. Okay. You can also change the amount of devices as they're after the fact. So after you set up the user, you can edit the devices here, and you can click in here and add more devices. As you can see here, it's a minimum of one and a maximum of 20. So I can increase my devices right up to 20 if I wish, and hit submit. Okay, so as I was saying there, um, so you can limit it by device or you can do it by um, user if you wish. You can also update the amount of machines that you have, okay, if you wish from here, okay. So doing that will allow you to, um, if you need to add more devices to your to your user account, uh, if that particular user is backing up multiple machines, you can uh, you can allow for that as well. Okay, so if you wish also to add a new user, um, some of you may be familiar with this already. Um, for anybody who's who's new to just to the admin console, um, you may not be uh, familiar or comfortable with it. So what you can do here is you select your user group if you're using user groups. Okay. You select the type of user you want, desktop or server, and here, as I said, you can actually input the limit. If you want to put in input a storage limit directly for the user from the start, you can input it here. Okay? You don't have to, but if you want to, you can, and that's, again, limiting the user and how much storage they can actually use. Okay? You can input the amount of devices here that you want to give the user, and if you want to enable sync, you can do that from here. Just tick that option, and that will send it also the link to download a uh, sync for the user. Okay, so here um, you enter the user's email address, give them a username, their email address, and then click the add users button and it sends the email to the user. They then get an email 
uh, with a link to actually create an account and by doing that all they're doing is picking the link opening up and creating a password once they do that it will give them the download link for the software if they have sync enabled it'll give them the link for their the, the client to download their machine but also the link to download my, uh, to Mo, Mo, Sync. okay so um, that's users um, so and um, looking at users adding users as I say a while ago um, resources from here we can see our resource summary we can uh, change our plan and we can also view our billing information and our billing history okay we can also from here as well change our payment information if you wish to update credit card information or um, whatever way you're actually uh, paying your 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 um, your bill okay so from here we can see your billing information okay so um, your account status your next renewal date how much that next renewal is and then the breakdown of the plan okay that you're using okay um, here's your is your actual plan section you can update or downgrade that if you wish from here notice how and um, the submit button will not uh, become clickable until you actually change a uh, plan okay so as you can see here our resources we have currently 58 gigabytes being used and 51 gigabytes available okay down here we have our billing history and these are our invoices clicking on one of these links here um, where there is an amount will open up the invoice okay so and the invoice will look um, will pull from our billing system and it will look like this okay I'll give you a breakdown of what you're paying for and a breakdown of any taxes or anything like that and the, p the billing period and so on okay as I say all your billing and um, your all your invoices will be stored within the admin console and um, if you wish to you can also sign up for the um, email notification with, with, with uh, if you ever what for whatever charges you have on the account okay so in terms of user groups as I mentioned a while ago we have a user group list here so we have three user group types we've shared assigned and limited so I'm just going to open up and edit my um, default user group here as you can see here I've shared storage that means and if you click over here it's it's storage is pulled from um, so the storage is pulled from a pool that's that's held at the organization level so any user can pull from this um, storage at the organization level so if a user if users are hitting the, their maximum all I have to do here is come in and purchase additional storage and I don't have to go down to each individual machine and increase their storage unless I have limits there if however um, I, if I want to do that I can also limit the user group okay so I can limit the particular uh, user group to a certain amount if I wish um, that just means again I'm still pulling the storage from the shared pool but I'm not taking it out of the shared pool so I don't own it in that user group it's still in the shared uh, pool if I wish to own the storage for that particular user group I would change it to assigned and as we see here when I change this to assigned I can change I put 30 gigabytes in here and hit save once I do that and that's saved you'll notice the storage uh, resource summary here will change as well it jumps up 30 gigabytes uh, for the amount used that's because I've taken storage out of that uh, pooled group and I'm now holding it for myself for this user group okay so that's in terms of resources within the in the admin console um, so the main things we're looking at there is uh, for users um, we're looking at limiting we can limit users we can limit the devices if we wish um, if we prefer to go more granular than, than just the user level um, if we limit the user um, it's going to limit any devices underneath them if we limit the um, device it's only going to affect that device other devices underneath the user won't be affected by that limit okay um, if you wish to um, remove them at any point you can remove limits like that it will give you a are you sure message you just hit okay and the same then for when uh, if you want to change the device limit 
if you wish as well, um, although we don't send out uh, product keys to users any longer, you can still see the product keys from within the um, user's account from here. Okay, they still show up. Um, that can give you an idea of how many. Uh, so here are the, the four available devices that I still have. I can still use them if I wish. Okay, so that's just in terms of users, as I say, going over storage limits for the user, storage limits for the device. Okay. In terms of resources, we said we looked, we looked at there was just changing the plan, the billing history and billing information. If you wish to um, include, be included in the uh, email alerts for your billing, click on your name in the top right-hand corner here, or alternatively, underneath configuration, open up account details. And here, you can change this to receive uh, most email notifications. Um, you can change for Mosey Pro Newsletter as well if you wish. And there will be also an additional option there on um, some of your accounts and it will have and it will be that option to receive um, invoice um, emails. Okay, so that would be basically every time there's a charge in your account, you will get an invoice with um, a link to download that invoice. Okay, so that, that's our walkthrough and our um, slideshow presentation. Are there questions uh, on the topic? Um, if you do have questions, it will be in the chat box um, in the bottom section of your screen. You should see it there. Um, if you do have any questions, just pop them in there. And again, I do apologize for the audio. I know it was dropping in and out. I'm unsure why that was. Um, I wasn't having any network issues myself. Um, I'm unsure if it was just the software this at this uh, this time, um, but I will be sending out the recording of the session also to everybody. Hi, John. Go ahead and if you want to type in your question there and I will uh, answer it for you. There's not in the software, um, in the webinar software, there's no way to activate the um, mic for yourself once I've started the session. This particular type of session doesn't allow me to to activate the um, audio afterwards. Apologies. That's just for the recording purposes. Okay, so on your questions in relation to your database server. Okay, Owen, um, so it's where you can set, so your question is in relation to your, your database server. It, you're asking, is there a way I can set Mosey to only store the last three months of, of backup? So is it that you only want to backup the last three months from the, the database server, or you only want to keep, um, you only want to keep three months worth of backups on the Mosey servers? Mm -hmm. 
because with our retention policy, when you're backing up, we will only keep the 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 the, the actual file for um, 60 days. So you so for example, if you back up today, it will be today's backup will be available for the next 60 days. Um, and once you get 61 days, today's backup will be removed from our servers. So is that is that backups you have you have storage backups since 2011 on your on your database server, or from you can see backups from 2011 through the Mosey Web Restore window. If it's that you can, okay, so I think that. So Mosey actually doesn't take account for your actual, um, so for the version history. So as I say, if you backed up today, you know, we take whatever you back up today. So for example, if you backed up 10 gigabytes today, that's how much storage space you're using, okay? But if, for example, you deselect some files over the next week, and next week you're only backing up eight gigabytes, you're only going to be charged for the eight gigabytes you're using, okay? Whereas we still will have, you know, those versions of those files, and we'll probably be still storing roughly our, 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 our ratio is that for whatever you're actually storing, we're probably using up about three times that much amount of space in the back end for the different versions you would have. But you do only pay for the current backup amount. You know, you don't pay for the versions that we store on our servers at all. But if it's a scenario where you're still seeing backups from 2011, that would be unusual. Um, if you can, um, if you can, you should have received, you should have my email address there. If not, I'm going to pop in here for everybody. Okay, so you should see that now. Um, that's my email address there. And John, if you want to email me the um, email address, if you want to send me the email address for the account that you're seeing this on, so the so the user account for that database uh, server, and what I'll do is I'll get somebody in our support team to reach out to you and have a look into that issue for you. Because we could, we could, we, you know, I could, uh, give you instruction here and 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 so on, but it'd be it would be better to actually get a hands-on look at it and see what's actually happening on the account, if that suits you, of course. My pleasure, John. Thank you very much for joining today. So just pop me an email and I will get somebody in support to have a look into that issue for you and reach out to you on it. Thanks very much. Any other questions um, on today's session?
Okay, so if there are any other questions, just um, do pop them in there now. I'll leave the session open for another few minutes um, if people do have any more questions. Um, if not, thank you for uh, taking the time to join today. Um, I will be um, sending on the recording of the session to everybody who registered um, and so that if you did miss any of the session, be it due to your own work commitments or due to the poor um, quality of the audio, again, I do apologize for that today, then we will be, I will be sending out a, a recording of the session as well um, once it's hosted on our uh, support uh, website.